And we are back. We are back. And doing... We are back. Doing stuff. <laughs> I don't know where I'm at right now. This week has been a clusterfuck. <clears throat> I'm hoping that this is muted. It is. This is going to be the chat for Twitch since it's not working. There we go. All right, you're going to have to let me know if I'm still in frame if I move around too much. Oh, oh, that works. Okay. There. Left screen, Twitch. Right screen, 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 screen. Squeen. You sound squeen. like me. <laughs> squeen. Squeen, everybody. Look at my squeen. This will work too, though, because now I can see that Ironclad just subscribed with Prime where it doesn't tell me that in the restream chat. Oh, look at that. Oh, my gosh. We're like 11 away from 300. Are we really? That's so dope. All right. Well, I'm obsessed with how pretty girl is. Pretty girly is. They're obsessed with how pretty you are. Is that me? I'm girly? I guess so. Oh, um, thank you. I, I appreciate the compliment. Peach is giving Shogun beauty right now. Shogun? The movie Shogun or the show. That's such a fucking good show. God, I've fallen asleep far show. too much. Would you rewatch it with me? I, yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's going to be one of those. That's like, that's up there on like the Game of Thrones list for me. Okay. Not because of betrayal or anything, but like. Just how well it's composed it's and the so acting. and fucking good. I think the storyline is really what makes this show the show. Yeah. And what people don't know is the guy that plays um, Turinata, or Turinaga in that show is actually a master swordsman in real life, which mm -hmm. I think is super fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to let people know on TikTok. I do actually respond <clears throat> to comments, but it's currently 11 a.m. So we are live on YouTube if you'd like to be a part of the conversation. This is now just a window into what we're doing if you want to hear an email being read. So forewarning before we get into anything, Peaches is pretty salty and annoyed today. So just know that you guys might get the hard side of the peanut, brit peanut brittle from Peaches today where I might be the sweet and sugary yeah. flavorful side. So just know. Why did you say I'm salty? <laughs> is, it, you, is it that you, you've been, palatable? You, you, you were pretty aggressive to the people in your TikTok just a minute ago. Yeah, I was, I was getting pretty aggressive because I think it's absolute bullshit to think that you're not a problem. Right. Absolute bullshit. It's narcissistic. It is high horse, better than thou. Disgusting to me. You oh. love Quinn. Go ahead. I just want to say before I forget, I I would accept Ben watching Shogun and like maybe eating a super dope dinner as a date night. Okay. You love Quinn on, on Twitch said, how do I leave an emotionally abusive relationship without being gaslit to stay? You make the decision to leave and you leave. Right. Being, it, allowing yourself to be gaslit and to stain is a choice. It is a choice. Yeah. It's. You're not strong in your convictions. If you've made a decision and somebody can come to you and just say a couple of words and you just melt at the words, mm -hmm. you're, you have no conviction in anything. Yeah. Uh, we just got a hype train on Twitch. I don't know what a that means, train? but we have one. That's cool. And uh, we just hit 250 subscribers over there, which I think is Hell cool. Hell yeah. Um, oh, for those of you who don't know, we go live on Twitch now. I'm talking to you on TikTok. To Be Better Podcast on Twitch. We are live streaming Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. We are doing Outlast Trials. We yeah. have Helldivers. A couple of other games that we've been perusing. Mortuary Assistant. Um, Stormy C says, I was watching the first episode of 2BB, and I have to say the work you two have done on yourselves, you actually look 20 years younger and healthier. You both have done a lot of work. That's crazy because I am, I am fatter than I was when we started. I am definitely more out of shape. Um, my sleep patterns are worse than they've ever been. Yeah. I feel so bad falling asleep. <laughs> I do. I'm going to be honest. I really do. Like I try my best to stay awake as late as I can. It doesn't bother me. There's uh, nights that I'm up until two or three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I can't. And there's nights that I lay down at eight o'clock on the couch. I'm like, yeah. And you're out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, babe, you want to go lay down? You're like, no, if I sleep now, I'm not going to go to bed later. <laughs> yep. Hype trains is really good means they're dropping money. Oh, that's no. cool. Holy shit. Okay, thank you. All right. Let's uh, outlast trials. Hell yes. And we're going live every Saturday on Twitch. Yep. I'll be playing. I'll probably be playing Call of Duty later uh, doing some zombie runs. If anybody that is able to run the red zone wants to help me kill a mega bomb with a pack three or a level three pack a punch, that would be gangster. But 
Anyways, let's um let's do some some emails. Let's let's do something. All right. So this email do something. is one that I had pulled because I didn't understand the caption the the, the subject line. I'm gonna pause. Okay. Uh, Mama McGee said it's how you wear your happy that makes us look younger. That's crazy. If you guys are in our Discord, um, we have a gaming server that is separate from our normal Discord. Um, and my Activision um, ID is in there. So send me a friend request if you guys want to play. All right, I'm done. Wait, you have your what linked where? My Activision is linked where? Is in the new Discord that they created. Oh. So for people that want to play zombies. No, I didn't. Okay. I did not. I wasn't sure if you wanted that. By Felicia said the bees on the glasses. You should show your glasses chain and shout out Tasha. Okay. So everybody, oh gosh, this is a whole process. I see people asking if I've made these braids for Cole. I did not. I'm not going to take credit for that because I did these braids because my hair is a fucking mess today. Can you see the little bumblebees? Yeah. And honeycombs. These are from Homestead Sass. My friend Tasha makes these. She made a little bookmark that matches them too and I'm obsessed with it. Um... These braids are not for Cole, even though my deepest sympathies for that. It's absolutely an abomination. I, I don't want to take credit. Who's here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't want credit given to me, period, for that, because that was not in my brain when I made these braids. Although going forward, that will definitely be something in my brain. Right. Homestead Sass. She's on Etsy and she is also on TikTok. Her name is Tasha, guys. I'm going to be sliding around and eating while we're doing this. So. Okay. I think, I, I before we get into the email, I want to agree with the person on how we wear our happiness. Because in this year of doing the podcast <clears throat> with you, I feel like we have gotten to a point in our marriage that we'd have never gotten to without being this yeah well it, it's changed it's changed a lot the you know the the depression and mental health has gotten better like there's just yeah. been a lot of improvement so I, I agree with that i think it's a dope thing that people can see it um we are going to read an email i see all kinds of questions coming through on twitch and on youtube um we are not going to be jumping into that just yet but we are seeing them we're going to jump into an email, then we'll read some super chats, and then we'll, we'll do the thing. We'll do some Q&A if we have time. So this email is titled, Fourth Trimester Survival. And this is a wizard note. I did my best with this, but it is not written terribly well, and some of it was confusing. I have left a lot of it untouched so you can get a feel of how it was written. I apologize in advance for how jumpy and confusing this is. Hello, I'd really appreciate hearing your guys' thoughts on this topic. I've been listening to your podcast since August of 2023 when you guys, when I found you guys on TikTok and my whole world had been flipped upside down and it has really helped me to gain perspective on a lot of things. I, 25, found out I was pregnant at 24 and the father, 29, and I had already called it quits after experience a miscarriage in the previous year. So you guys were fucking around without being together. I had already called it quits after experiencing a miscarriage in the year previously. Right? Like I'm not wrong to deduct that. Okay. I told him about being pregnant again and we started dating again. He was all for it and it was good for a while. And then he started saying he was unhappy and didn't want another kid and didn't want to be with me. I told him that was his choice, but I was keeping the baby due to the previous being my fifth miscarriage, counting the one abortion I had at 16 that I never forgave myself for. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be that lady. I'm going to be that woman for a minute. Don't try to put abortion and miscarriage into the same category. I've experienced a miscarriage. It was one of the most devastating things that's ever happened to me. An abortion was a choice. 
I understand it was still a very devastating choice at 16. I, if I could have chosen to not have a miscarriage, I would not have. Months go by and he's fine. We're good, no arguing. Fast forward to about a month ago, during labor with my daughter, he had invited his mother into the delivery and recovery room at the hospital. Okay. That would be a lot for me. I'm trying to break this down and understand it as we go. And I think having anyone besides the father present during delivery... Mm -hmm. while she was pregnant he left her and then she had a miscarriage and then they got back together and then she got pregnant and he didn't want it was that no so they were together got pregnant had a miscarriage and then they called it quits okay. and then she got pregnant again by the same man okay. he said i don't want to have a child no they 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 started dating again because she got pregnant while they were not dating mm -hmm. He was all for it and it was good for a while. And then he started saying he was unhappy and didn't want another kid and didn't want to be with me. Okay. That, I, that, I, that I okay. I can't believe that they had that conversation and then months go by and he's fine. We're good. No arguing. I couldn't be in a limbo of. My mic was muted, guys, because I'm stuffing my face and what I needed clarity on. <laughs> she's already read. I just needed it. So I didn't unmute myself. Yeah. I apologize. So. Living in that limbo, as the woman, you have told me that you don't want to be with me and you don't want this child. We're not going months without revisiting that conversation. That's a next day conversation of, I, I am not okay with where we're sitting right now. We're getting ready to start a family together. Ignoring that and just assuming that he's fine and months go by and that you guys are good with no arguing without revisiting that conversation, you contributed to the fallout of this relationship. Why are you smirking? Look at the chat. Look at this. Oh, yeah, they're all saying they can't hear you. Mic is off. We can't hear him. Let's plug Chris. Turn your mic on. Mic, the mic. Oh, my God. Here, wait. Just so the mic is on while I'm doing it. Oh, my God, the mic. We can't hear you, the mic. And then, oh, ha, ha, ha. Laughing my ass off. Oh, duh, you were eating. We all panicked. LOL. Yeah. What's for lunch? Like, it just, it, it's got me chuckling because both chats are doing the same thing. Twitch was doing it, too. Right. I don't like hearing people chew or breathe. Right. It, it enrages me. I get that. There's, um, it's an auditory thing. It is. There's a, a name for it, mm -hmm. and I have it. So I mute myself because nobody wants to hear. Or Some people do. <sighs> Some people watch mukbangs. That's the thing for them. Um, mother was invited. His mother was invited into the delivery room. During the time of me pushing, his mom got on a phone call with his ex and was talking to her as I was pushing. I told her to leave the room because I couldn't focus, not knowing who exactly she was on the phone with at the time. <laughs> Did you just say she was on the phone? Her mom, the, the boyfriend's mom was or whomever this gentleman is at the time because he said that he didn't want to be with her while she was in labor she was in the the room on the phone with his ex wow yeah wow i would have a conniption fit oh man do you guys want to hear an intrusive thought i'm going to tell you the intrusive <clears throat> thought so women shit while giving birth i would full <laughs> monkey it <laughs> And be like, get off the phone or get out. <laughs> like, <clears throat> Play that game with me. Why? Why? Why be on the phone? It, yeah. If or, you're going to be in there, why? first of all, why be in there? Yeah. You're the mom of the dude. Like, this isn't your vagina. You have no real reason to watch it be stretched over this infant's head. Are you unmuted? I am. Okay. Just want to make sure. That's one. Yeah. Two, why are you on the phone while in there when you could have simply just stepped out and said, excuse me, I have to take this? And three, were you explaining the process to the ex? Here it comes. Oh, gosh. Here yeah, it comes. Like narrating the, legs, the birth. The legs are open. I can see the head. Oh, my God. It's screaming. Like, seriously? Why? Oh, man. 
Why? I don't get it. Lord forbid I hear some woman say something about my vagina as I'm giving birth, like just like a negative comment. I would lose it. Y'all have watched you, right? <laughs> I would full monkey. I'm glad you guys found that money, that money, that funny. The father of my daughter sat in a chair halfway across the room on his phone while I was screaming in pain and had severe body shakes I couldn't control. I felt like I was not being comforted or supported because he was just in a corner on his phone, so I said something about it. The father of my daughter sat in a chair halfway across the room on his phone while I was screaming in pain and had severe body shakes because I couldn't control. Right, but this man said he didn't want to be with you and didn't want another kid. I still think that having that, uh, that's not the time to be on your phone, bro. Even if you don't want the kid. Yeah. If you don't want the kid, why are you even there? You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> you're choosing to be in a relationship with somebody who's having your kid. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we don't know that. They had the conversation of, I don't want another kid and I don't want to be with you. And apparently he doesn't want another child. So he already has a kid. I don't know if that's them or with somebody else. Could be with her out of convenience, but I, I wouldn't, my, my feelings would not be hurt if the conversation ended with, I don't want to be with you and I don't want a kid. I'm not going to expect you to be on my bedside holding my hands. We're not in a relationship. That's true. I mean, you can be here to make sure that the daughter is born safely and she's healthy and all of that. I don't know. That's just me though. If I told someone I didn't want to be with you and, and I don't want this child and we were just living as roommates... And I'm there purely just to make sure the kid's safe. I'm not going to hold your hands. Right. But I, why be in the room at that point? Yeah. Some people. If you're going to be on your phone, why be in the room? Right. No, I'm going to sit out here because I still plan on sleeping with her. And mm -hmm. the idea of her shitting herself while pushing a watermelon out of her vagina just doesn't do it for me. So, Doc, I'm going to wait in the room. I'm going to be over yeah. here. Let me know when everything's good. That's pretty fucked up if they're not together. He's ignoring her like this and they're still having sex. Yeah. Yeah. That's playing with emotions. I felt like I was not being comforted or supported because he was just in the corner on his phone. So I said something about it. His response was, I told you I didn't want to be with you and I didn't want another kid. So you guys didn't ever revisit the conversation. Why be there? I don't know. That's a really good question to ask. Why even be there? <clears throat> when you told me that this was what the email was about, mm -hmm. this is not what I thought or where I thought we'd be going with this. Yeah. At all. I was like, fuck it. I'd love to talk about that topic of not wanting to be with somebody who has a kid. Mm -hmm. And here we are talking about it. That's not what I thought we were no. getting into. That was just a snippet. I feel like I stepped in mud. Yeah. With clean shoes, and then a few minutes later, I smell that it's not really mud. Yeah. Yeah. I would have kicked everybody out of that damn room. Well, I was having contraction, con contractions. While I was having contractions and body shakes from being induced, his words caused another argument because I've told him countless times over the period of nine months that he does not need to stay around. But you've also chosen to stay but around. But didn't tell him to leave either, and there's right. a difference. Right. He told you he didn't want to be with you, and you chose to stay with a man who didn't want to be with you. Julie Rock said, did you think that you'd be talking about labor and poop while eating? I don't think you guys understand how good my stomach is. Unless we were talking about pus or eyeballs, I'm golden. Yeah. Or teeth. Oh, well, did I just do it? Why'd you have to go there? <laughs> <clears throat> I'm so sorry. We're making a list. <laughs> because now I'm acutely aware that I'm using my teeth to eat. Thanks, babe. <laughs> I can, I can like mama bird you. No, I <laughs> no fucking can't. I would do it for you, though, if you asked me to. That's how much I love you. Yeah? Yeah. 
You want to get back into it? I do. I, I am on the side of you also did not tell him to leave. So I, I don't know what the expectation was. Because for nine months, this man has been saying, I don't want to be with you. Mm-hmm. I told him to go outside so I can be alone for five minutes because I'm not going to watch him play on his phone while I can't move. And he talked to me about that now while I was in labor. He refused, and I told him to take five minutes outside on his own or I'd have him removed from the room for causing me even more stress. <clears throat> he went outside and then came back. Okay, so now we're fast forwarding. Okay, so did he come back in a better mood? Did he start supporting you? Was he holding your hand? Did he change his mind and he wanted to be with you? Fast forward to the recovery room. He invited his mom to my recovery room and she chose to walk in, not say hi or anything to me, told my daughter's father he did a great job and proceeded to take a picture of my daughter and send it to his ex and then proceed to sit in a rocking chair in my recovery room and call his ex and give out information about me and my child to her. Oh, your child. Not his, not yours, not ours. I'm sorry, not his and not ours. Yours. Hers, yeah. Okay. Keep Mm -hmm. that same energy when you go after him for child support. Yeah. I will die on that fucking hill. I'm going to say it as a lady because people get pissed off at my husband when he does. If you are a woman who will stand by, this is my child, then you can't go for the child support because at that point you have to acknowledge that he is the father and he has a right to the child. Mm -hmm. All while I was still coming down from the medications and still could not feel my legs from the epidural. I told his mom to stop giving out information about my daughter and either stop disrespecting me by being on the phone with his ex in my recovery room or get out. She opened the door and stood in the hallway and said, fuck you, bitch, to me. Hold on a second. Okay. On Twitch, uh, Marcella Hart said it's not theirs because he said he wanted no part of it. So by that logic, if he doesn't want a part of it, you can't go for child support. Does she have the ability or the right to go after him for child support? Because during the pregnancy, he's like, I don't want anything to do with this. Mm Mm-hmm. Real question. I'm not being shitty, but because of your statement, I want to know your opinion. Go ahead, babe. That's a really good question. All of this was recorded by the nursing staff. My uncle's family are all department heads at the hospital I gave birth at, so my aunt came to visit in my recovery room and let me know that I had been flagged and would have to be screened and talked to by a social by a social worker before being allowed to take my daughter home due to my daughter's father and his mother's behavior and comments while I was in the hospital. That doesn't make sense to me. What doesn't? That because of the daughter's father and his mother's behavior, she got screened and will now have to talk to a social worker before taking her daughter home? Okay, so let's break that down now that I got food in my mouth. Okay. Can you read it one more time? Because there's something specific I would like to break down. So it says, I had been flagged and would have to be screened and talked to by a social worker before being allowed to take my daughter home due to my daughter's father and his mother's behavior and comments while I was in the hospital. Okay, so was it what they said or was it the reaction that she had to them saying the things that they had? Right, that's what I'm thinking. And do they all live together? That would also be my second thought. Because right. if they're going home, if the daughter is going home to that environment, I could see why the mother would be investigated and all that. But if she's not <clears throat> living with the mother and the boyfriend and say she's going home to her, her own place. Shouldn't matter. Right. I can, see, I, I can see the reason why they would do that, though, because he's the father, or at least they're claiming he is. Yeah. So if that's the case, obviously, they want to make sure the kid's going to be okay with the father. But. Mm-hmm. When child, when CPS gets involved, it's not just a one-sided thing. They interview all kinds of people. I heard something the other day, uh, yesterday actually, and I wanted to bring it up and I was waiting for an opportunity and this is a good opportunity because of what I just said with the, you know, were they freaking out and she chose to freak out back. Mm -hmm. Um, When you get angry and make a choice and to start screaming, Right. right, you get mad and you can't help it and you start yelling at people, you are choosing to yell at people and and then 
after that, choosing to be angry, to use the anger as an excuse to yell at people. And that it happens in the order that way, not you get angry and then decide to yell. It's that you feel you need to yell, so you allow yourself to get angry to do that. And when I heard that, I was like, that's fucking stupid. That's not true. And they were like, have you ever had somebody be in the middle of an argument and their phone ring and they answer the phone perfectly fine, calm, and then go right back to being angry? Because it's a choice. You want to get your point across and you want to be heard and you want people to feel how you're feeling. So somebody fucks your order up and you choose to be a fucking asshole because your order's messed up. You wanted to be an asshole and, and you're you using want to your know. anger to, to, as an excuse to do that. Yeah, and you want like, the person to know that it is a direct attack against them because they are seeing plainly that you're being nice and cordial with everybody else in the vicinity. But the moment they look at you, they, you, they want you to know it's a personal attack. I can't tell you how much that fucked me up growing up. Watching him go from calm to angry to calm. Well, or angry cal with anger me. To calm to calm. Yeah. Yeah. Angry with me. And then in a split second, speaking calmly to somebody else. And then the moment they look at me again, <clears throat> it's hell. I yep. just. Marcus, Marcus Elliott is in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Marcus Elliott. Okay. Back to the email. My aunt knew everything that was said, given and done my entire hospital stay. It was humiliating. Fast forward to being out of the hospital, the father and I with our daughter moved into a new apartment I had set up before going into labor. We got settled in and decided to have his son from a previous relationship come over for a weekend visit. Why? Right? Why? <laughs> During birth, he said, I don't want to be with you and I don't want this child. He said it beforehand. I don't want to be with you and I don't want to have a baby. She, she was like, well, you can leave. Not you should leave. Not let's end this. Right. You can leave if you choose to. <clears throat> and she now he's living with her. Right. This is going to. I think this is going to get a lot worse. Did she say where he was living before he moved in there? Was he living with his mom? He sounds it like, doesn't say. He sounds like the kind of pussy that'd be a grown-ass man with two kids living yeah, with his mama. Living with his mama. Yeah. I bet that's the case because of how comfortable mom was coming and going. Real quick before you pick that up. Somebody okay. asked who is Marcus. I have no idea. <laughs> I really don't. Um, he's been here for over a year. One day he popped into the chat and I was like, Marcus Elliott's in the chat. And I have done that every single time I've seen him pop into the chat since then. It's fun for me. It lets me recognize that I recognize people's names or it shows you guys that I recognize your names. And yeah. it's just something that kind of stuck. It's a fun <laughs> thing to do. That's how I feel about Lo Aloha Snack. Oh, excuse me. Aloha Snack yeah. Bar. You know that they're in Sarasota. <coughs> I do remember that. Somebody on TikTok just said it's like this person is stabbing them in self in the foot and wondering why they're in pain. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly what that is. It's literally what they're doing. Oh, man. That one made my eyes water. I, but I, I really, I got to be honest, guys. Um, <clears throat> we, we, are, we are people who are still enamored by the fact that you guys enjoy our content. Oh, yeah. And we fangirl over you guys when we get stopped in public. Like when you guys are like, oh my God, and you're freaking out. And I'm like, oh my God. Right. We're freaking out too. It's super fucking cool. So yeah. like, this is not like, I, I don't know. This is, this is just fun for us. And we love seeing the comments. And when you guys are here over and over again, we recognize names. Mm. Oh yeah. Chaotic thoughts is one I recognize a lot. And of course the staples. Yeah. Ryan Boyd is one that I recognize. Mm -hmm. Hey, Hannah Carver, did you work at a restaurant called Sticky Cactus? I did take that picture in the background. Anybody curious? Uh, Distorted Devil on Twitch said, I watched Peach's video about trauma response and how Chris reacted. I love your relationship, guys. <clears throat> My man is so patient with me. I am coming off of a really hard week and have finished this week off. I fucked up dinner and I lost a rechargeable battery. Yeah, that's the only time in my life that I have not thoroughly enjoyed gravy and biscuits and I still ate it. <laughs> you did. I was amazed. I threw mine away. I, I was so mad at myself yesterday. 
also before you move on, there is somebody in the Twitch whose name is Heel O Kitty. I saw yeah, I Heel. recognize that name. Not hello, Heel. Heel. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Muting myself so that I can eat my sandwich. Okay. I had let him know that I did not want his ex in the house. They could set up a place to meet instead. He completely disregarded my wishes. I mean, is that a surprise? Right. Is that a surprise? <laughs> right? <laughs> Mouthful of food. Supporting what I got to say. I love I'm it. I want to hype you up. You fucking tell him, babe. And when the day came, she came into our house anyways. No fucking way. Hold on. Okay. Hilo Kitty said the only reason her name is that on Twitch because all she does in video games is heal her boyfriend. <laughs> You're a fucking in-game medic. Yes. Start putting that shit on resumes. That's funny. <clears throat> That's funny. I was pleased. Oh, back into the email. Yeah. Okay. I was pleased that we were able to talk. And let me know that what their son was allergic to, etc. Even though I've been around his son a couple of times and knew most of it. I'm that mom, guys. I will remind Nana of things that she has known since they were born. Because I am that mom. I want all of my bases covered. And if I, am, if I forgot to communicate something and then that's why something happened to my child, I'm at fucking fault. So I will over communicate and over communicate and over communicate like my child's life depends on it. I am that person. Because it does. Right. People don't think that way though. I know. But there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. How are you going to constantly preach gentle reminders and then not live by giving people gentle reminders? <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, so you, you laid a boundary that the ex was not allowed in the place. The ex comes in anyways, and your response was that we, you were pleased that you guys were able to have a nice, polite conversation. You were disrespected in your own home. It's nice to see you. I'm sorry you can't come in right now. We got a lot of stuff going on. <clears throat> we'll see you next time where we can plan something for tomorrow. We can do a picnic at the park. And then I'm having a conversation after I close that door. You can call me a bitch. It's okay. It's not going to hurt my feelings. Better yet, I would prefer if you thought I was one. Is the ex just an ex or the mother of his child? The, uh, the mother of his child. That leads into a whole a lot of other nonsense to me. Yeah. Yeah, because regardless of them being an ex and them not being together anymore, that is the mother of his child, and mm -hmm. she's allowing him to be there, and they are, uh, they're doing the thing, and the kid right. is going to be staying there. Mm -hmm. As a parent, my kid ain't staying anywhere that I haven't been inside of. Right. I'm coming to meet and see the living conditions. Mm -hmm. So in that situation, like, that's not acceptable to me. Right. As a parent, she doesn't. I, that that's a whole fucking other discussion, mm -hmm. but I don't think she's right in saying that the mom can't come in there and see the, the period. Right. So that, but that's, I guess that comes down to it being more about the, the, the welfare of the child and not about the relationship between the, the current boyfriend and his ex. Right. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that, <clears throat> with that sentiment, checking on the household, making sure the environment's safe. My point was more on the fact that she's just letting herself be walked on. Oh, yeah, absolutely is. And when a boundary is made, that boundary needs to be upheld. Right. She's also not, not like, um, she's not upholding her boundaries. No, she's not. They're, they're hollow words. And he mm -hmm. knows it because he's been able to manipulate and step on her this entire fucking year. He said, I don't want to be with you, but I bet he's still getting pussy. I bet he is. I mean, the, the, the child that they had yeah. while they were not together proves that. Right. <clears throat> back into the email yeah however after moving back to california from nevada with our kid's father while pregnant my entire pregnancy was put into a shadow of him saying okay okay so we're moving on to another point this is no longer about the ex being in the house are okay. we ready yep don't get whiplash guys like i just got 
However, after moving back to California from Nevada with our kid's father while pregnant, my entire pregnancy was put into this shadow of him saying, well, we had a baby shower for her, or, <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's where we went to do the ultrasound for her son, or even bringing him, or even him bringing her up in my doctor's appointments, talking about how he gave her a baby shower or 4D photos, or me just even mentioning buying something and him saying, oh, yeah, we had this one for our son. It got really frustrating, and it felt like everything had to be in her shadow. <laughs> she called her peach. The switch has begun. Yes, Lindsay, it has. Look, this, um, <clears throat> this is one of those things where, yes, people are going to have a lived life experience before this one. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to talk about that from time to time, but there's a time and place for it. Right. It doesn't have to be thrown around and, and thrown in people's face constantly. That's not right. acceptable manners. Like that's just not good behavior. Yeah. Why why if this is really the type of man that he is, why would you continue to keep him around? We know that not everybody's meant to be together. Some people just don't mesh. Mm-hmm. Why would you continuously make the choice to do this? Yeah, this sounds like just miserable. If every time, if I were pregnant, right? If you and I magically got pregnant tomorrow and I am five months along and we are at an ultrasound and every single time we're at an ultrasound, you bring up your ex and what she went through, not even talking about the child, just just talking about your ex like you, are you still in love with her? Like, why? What is this? Why? Why can't can't we just live in the moment with our right. family that we're creating? Um, St- Stitches on Twitch said she had a baby with someone who already had a baby and didn't commit. I don't know what she expected. Yeah, that's true. Good point. <clears throat> Somebody on TikTok said, I bet she never mentioned that it bothered her. Uh, I mean, I, I don't believe that. Yeah. I don't believe that to be true. Why is that? Um, Because this entire situation is toxic and I'm willing to bet that they scream and yell at each other quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't think that she has ever really articulated herself in a way that conveys what's really going on with her. She's just expressing the emotion and the problem. Right. Yeah. I, I would believe that more than really addressing the, the needs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Back to the email. Yep. I didn't get a baby shower or 40 photos. He didn't even take <coughs> pictures of me while I was pregnant. I didn't get anything. Okay. So now I'm going to revert back to what I asked. Were you guys even together? Like, are we solidified in a relationship when you're respecting all of this? Because he told you a few months into your pregnancy, I'm unhappy. I don't want to be with you and I don't want to have another kid. And then by your words in the email, you said for nine months, you had to remind him, well, if you don't want to be here, you don't have to be. So were you guys in a situation ship and just playing house? Or were you guys in a solidified, okay, we're going to try to make this work. We have an end goal. I want to be your woman. I'm going to be your man. Because if that conversation wasn't had, <clears throat> can you really expect a baby shower and 4D photos and all of these things that you were expecting? Because if I'm not dating somebody and we're just having a child together, yeah. I'm not doing that. I would assume that at some point they had to have had that conversation. Yeah. And they would have had to have the conversation about him moving in because people don't just move into your house. Like, that's not a thing. Mm-hmm. There's conversations about that happening before somebody just moves into your fucking home. Uh, well, I, I was once somebody who was very much a people pleaser. And I was terrified of making people mad because I thought everybody would just beat me. So I, I people pleased my way into living with somebody that I did not want to live with. And it's because I, I had low self-esteem. I had low self-worth. But the conversation was still had. Kind people, of. People don't just move in without notice. Like that's, that doesn't happen. Yeah. And even if you're a people pleaser and you're afraid of abuse or whatever the situation is, and they're like, hey, and I want to move in with you, that is a discussion being had. Yeah, I don't ever really actually <clears throat> agreeing to it happening. It just happened. Hmm. I, I was that blade of seaweed that only moved because the ocean moved. Yeah. But like I said, that, well, not like I said, to elaborate on that, that, is, that comes from somebody who is, 
had very, very poor mental health. I was not okay as a human being when that happened. I have to interrupt. You got a $50 super chat. Okay. Kyle Foster, finally making a live. Life and work has been hectic and busy. Thank you all for, for the podcast. All the help you provide. Big thanks for the men's group. Join Patreon 24, 24 more days until I, until I marry my queen. Also, so everyone knows when we use the term Kyle and we're making jokes about punching holes in the wall and shit, every Kyle is included except for Kyle Foster. Yeah. Kyle Foster is the only cool Kyle. Yeah, he, he is the exclusion to the rule. If there's any other Kyles in the chat, sorry you fall into that. No. Kyle Foster took the 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 win on that one. The only title. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> so fucking so fucking stupid. <laughs> it's fun. It is fun. I have fun with you. All right. Oh, look at that. I didn't say anything. Well, there you go. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Random TikToker, you guys were right. You were correct. So I just wanted my new home that I worked my ass off to get while I was pregnant to stay feeling like it was mine and not have his ex in the house. He couldn't even respect that. So you wanted the house to feel like yours, but you let somebody move into it? Right. Means it's not your house anymore. Yeah. And when you let somebody move in who has a child with another person, yeah, my like you said, my kid's not going somewhere where I can't see what the environment's like. <laughs> I was trying to be quiet and realize it's just prolonging it, just making it louder. If you're going to be with a parent who has children and you're going to be a bonus parent and you tell them that their ex is not allowed in the house, that's gonna, that could cause a lot of issues with visitation and custody. And be, I'm saying that because I would be that mother. Right. I don't know this woman you're living with. I don't know how she lives. I don't know how she maintains her household. We're not doing that. Not playing that game. Back into the email. I have tried reaching out to therapists out here, but the process is so much more difficult and difficult than back home. If you guys want to try a virtual, I mean, this is going to be a plug for us, but it's more just to get the information out there. If you're having a hard time finding a physical therapist near you, Virtual BetterHelp is an option. <clears throat> yep. And we are working with BetterHelp. You can go to betterhelp.com slash to be better. And it's 20% off. Yeah. Um, is that what it I was? Think it's 10. 10. You get a percentage off when you use the code, which is helpful. I would highly recommend checking it out. Or if you have anxiety of being in person with somebody and you want the comfort of your home, check it out. Betterhelp.com slash to be better. I had been trying to take my daughter's first Valentine's Day photos since the 13th, and every time I asked for help, he would play his video games instead. His ex had told him while his son was here that she wanted pictures of the kids together, and he made sure to get it done the same day, and when I brought it up, he blamed it on me, and I clarified by saying, so I'm supposed to carry everything upstairs, set it up, tend to her, get her dressed, and take pictures by myself. Pause. If he didn't live with you and you wanted that, that's exactly what you would have done. Yeah. So, yes. Yes. I, I mean, I've done that. Right. I wanted the photos. <clears throat> so I made it happen. I would also like, so that that's not like a, a jab at him or, a, you know, support of him. That's mm -hmm. a reality. Right. If you are alone and you want something done, you don't fucking make excuses. You do the shit. You don't call somebody and say, hey, can you come over and do this for me? Right. You fucking get it done. Yeah. I would like to point out that in this entire scenario, this dude respects his ex and, More. and the ex probably doesn't tolerate his bullshit the way mm -hmm. that this chick does. Yeah. If you allow someone to walk on you like a doormat, they're going to view you like a doormat and it's going to go from simply stepping on the doormat to wiping their feet on it. Yeah. So progression, you're yeah. allowing these things to happen. And eventually that foot wipe is going <clears> to be <throat> shit. Back to the email. Yep. I didn't get anything. Okay, hang on. I can't do that. So she said, I clarified by saying, so I'm supposed to carry everything upstairs, set it up, tend to her, get her dressed, and take care of the pictures by myself. That's not really a clarification. I am really hung up on that. That? I'm really bothered by that. Yeah, I'm, I'm bothered by that too. 
I think we're bothered by it for two different reasons. Why though. are you bothered because by it? Because I moved this entire fucking studio by myself. Because it needed to get done. Right. And you had a broken arm. Like, yeah. I, I'm not... That's bullshit. If you right. want something done, you'll get it done. If you want to, you will. Mm -hmm. it, you know, we could even go that far if you really want to go there. What's happening is you didn't get him to do what you wanted him to do, and you got salty about it. A lack of control, maybe. Right. You could have simply said, hey, watch the kid for five minutes while I take this shit upstairs and take pictures, because mm -hmm. you're obviously not helping. And that's a super aggressive way of doing it, but it's still something. Yeah. I have to answer this phone call, unfortunately. Okay. So I'm going to mute myself and just go to you. Going to me. Oh, man. Okay, well, let's read some chats. Um, does he really not want the kid or not? Because it seems like he's fine with it in certain scenarios. That's a good question. I think... This is me speculating. I am making this up. This is no part of anything anybody has said. Just so everybody can really... The people in the back, I am making this up. <laughs> it's so hard for me to not focus on what he's saying. Because my auditory and my thinking, I can't disconnect them. Okay. So, what if this man is still in love with the ex, so he will go above and beyond to satiate the things she wants, like the Valentine's Day photos with both the children. We also don't know what kind of father he is. We're just getting a lot of shit from the emailer about how he's not a good dad or a good partner or whatever he is to this person. People want to see your fingernails. I bet... If we got an email from the father, it would be a totally different situation. I'm willing to bet that it's factual. They, they focused. You're good. Might talk about how <clears throat> when he gets home from work, he watches the child while she does whatever she does for six hours. Could be a plethora of things. Once again, for those in the back, I made all of that up. If he's still in love with the ex and would go above and beyond, and like you said, if the ex doesn't tolerate his shit and has made it known, I don't want to be with you, but they have to interact because they have a child together, and he could possibly take every opportunity he can get to go, oh, she asked me to do something. This might be the point where she's like, okay, I'll take you back. Right. He's on his best behavior. He's trying. Right. Yeah. I, I actually agree with that. I thought that earlier when I made that whole... She doesn't tolerate that shit. The right. reason that they're not together is probably because she doesn't want to be with him and not the other way around. Mm -hmm. This whole fucking situation is a disaster and they don't need to be together. And that's no. that's really the gist of it. Yeah. The moment he was like, I don't know if I want to be with you and I definitely don't want to be a father. That's when you end this. Yeah, that's when you walk away. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go be a single parent. Here's my number. If you ever want to reach out, if it changes, you're shit out of luck. Bye. Yep. Someone just said on TikTok, was that Kelsey? It's on their bucket list to meet us. Well, we have meet and greets. We're on somebody's bucket list. Plug the Thailand thing. We're I'll going. even type it. In. Oh, they're on TikTok. <laughs> they are on TikTok. For those of you on TikTok, if you want to go check out the tree in my bio, there is a little fantastic thing that you can click on that will lead you to... TikTok finds trigger words to suppress me. So I'm trying to navigate that. It will take you to a place where you can see that we're going to Thailand and Jazz Fingers. I'm so fucking excited. I love that you matched my energy. Spirit Fingers. It's about this. <laughs> I fall more in love with you every day. I'm glad because you married an idiot. And you married somebody who's very forgetful. We balance it each other works. out. <laughs> yeah, because it's never like you just said that. Right. <laughs> um, we're going to Thailand. We are going in October. It is limited slots. It is 24 slots. 
or 12 couples, if you want to make it a couples retreat, we will be doing two seminars, one on you versus I statements. Other seminar is going to be grace, repair, and patience. We are going to an elephant sanctuary. We are doing a Thai cooking class. I'm so excited about that. We are going to go to a a Buddhist temple. Mm Mm-hmm. One of the most popular, like the most well-known Buddhist yeah. temples on the planet. We are going to that market. What is the market called? It starts with an Rawai. M. Was it? Rawai. R-A-W-A-I. Rawai Market. I may be saying that wrong. Rawai. We're trying our best. <laughs> but we're going to Thailand. And it's going to be... More than anything, a vacation getaway, a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. If you are that person who always puts off a vacation, it's time to take a vacation. What I am most excited about in this trip is that my husband and I get to go on vacation with you guys. And we get to make memories with the fans of the podcast. You guys have built this. Without your guys' support, we would not... (laughs) This wouldn't even be a, an apple in our eye. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm most excited for this because of the community aspect of it. Yeah. I, I, I really believe <laughs> there I, are spirit fingers. Um, ugh, super chats. Um, I really think that one of the things that I long for most in life is that feeling of being 15 again and everybody riding their bikes and yeah. meeting up at the same place every day and like having that hang out at the park and talk shit and, and no spitting responsibilities. And, and, right. And you get to just fucking live life yeah. in the moment for the moment. And I think that that, I'm, I believe I'm going to get that in Thailand. I fucking got it in Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> it, it felt like <clears throat> cloud nine sitting around that fire pit being super baked, just talking with everybody. It was fun. I'm getting emotional thinking about I it. I, I crave that human connection. And like, I kind of get it through the discord. I don't get it the same way like you and other people do because I don't know. It's, it's cold to me. I I need the real life human interaction and God doing that in Thailand on a beach while helping people solve marital problems. I wonder what the legalities of smoking in Thailand is. That's right, Zach. You and Jenna. But in Canadian currency, conversion is balls. Hey, Jen, you think you can operate a camera? Hey, babe, Thailand is the first country in Asia to legalize cannabis. Just so you know. Yeah. Hey, we're going to have some fun in Thailand. (laughs) There are more than 6,000 registered shops in Thailand for dispensaries. That's insane. Oh, gosh. I'm going to make some new friends in Thailand, guys. I'm so excited. I'm going to bring business cards over there, too. (laughs) Be like, check us out. We have a Discord. Let's stay connected. Come to Puerto Rico. I want to go to Puerto Rico. Costa Rica, I think, is going to be the next next seminar. I have family who has land in Puerto Rico. It's so gorgeous. I'm so jealous every time they're sending me photos and videos. Did you guys see my Grinch smile? Is that what you're referencing? I call that my Grinch smile. I want to get stoned with peaches. I want to get stoned with you guys. Are we done with that bullshit ass email? No, we're not. Fuck. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Let's just get over it. Can we just get it done? Yeah. I'm having fun talking to you guys. I know. And I'm more about, I'm totally about it. Let's just blast through this and we'll bullshit. I didn't get anything for my pregnancy. No maternity photos, no baby shower, no pictures of me pregnant unless I took them. So it just seems like the bare minimum that could have happened was not. Okay, I took them. So it just seems like the bare minimum that could happen was not. Was not have. Oh, it seemed like the bare minimum that he could have done was to not have his ex in my house that I worked my ass off while pregnant to get. And to help me set up and take pictures for our daughter. I thought she was your daughter. Well, when you make it our daughter for something he needs to do, it adds more of a negative connotation than if adds it's that my guilt daughter. Trip. It does. Yes, it does. It is manipulative vernacular. It is very manipulative vernacular. I think we are in a roommate stage. 
but I am not looking for a roommate. It feels like he doesn't want to spend quality time with me. I'm going to rather be watching his shows outside on a laptop or playing video games because he doesn't want to be with you. Yeah. You're right. This sounds like he doesn't like her to me. Right. And that he's there just because he can be. It's I'm a place curious for him how to much stay. he actually contributes. Yeah. She was saying that she worked her ass off to get this apartment. I, I believe that she probably put on everything for this apartment. Well, she did because he moved in afterwards. No, he they saw, moved in together. But she did it all, right? Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe well, this I new that. apartment that they move into, she said it was planned for them to move together. Gotcha. So that was already a pre-planned thing. Um, <clears throat> you said, I'm not looking for a roommate, but you're looking for somebody who constantly tells you for nine months during your pregnancy, I don't want to be with you but we can keep fucking. Was that what you were looking for? Because that's what you were choosing. That's what you were told. I don't want to be with you and I don't want more kids. Yeah. Hey, let's smash. Okay. My recommendation would be get some self-love, really evaluate what you want in life and have the balls to leave this man. And I say that with love and a forehead smooch. Right. Life, okay, <clears throat> before we move on. A family and being with a man is so much more than that. When I think of being with you, I think of happiness. How are you already starting to get teary? Because I love you so much. <laughs> I love you too, but you're like, when I think about be being with you. <laughs> I don't think, like... <laughs> When He's I say, making fun of her crying. What a narcissist dick. When I say I love you more, I fucking mean it. I know. <laughs> like. I think about you and I cry. Just how much I love you is overwhelming for me. And I feel like such a bitch right now saying this because I've always been that woman if I don't need no fucking man and I'm a strong woman. But here I am crying about thinking about my man and loving him and taking his boots <laughs> off and cooking for him and... You being frustrated with me because I lost a battery. <laughs> <laughs> I cried about that last night. If it night. was your battery, it wouldn't have bothered me, but it was mine. But you never used the battery. I've used it you twice. You practically gave it to me. <laughs> oh, fuck. No, I'm joking. I do genuinely feel bad about losing your thing because I, I did make it a point to be very responsible about it and put it back. And the fact that I did not, I am really beating myself up over it. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal. It's a $20 fucking battery. Yeah, but it's the principle of it. <laughs> when I think of being with my man, I think of safety. I think of protection. I think of you holding me when I cry and brushing my hair for me and pulling it back when I can't. And telling me lovingly that I'm being crazy because you want to see me happy. <laughs> Asking what you need to feel a certain way. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me? The <laughs> fuck did you just say? Yeah, that was trauma response, Pete. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There's so much more to being with a man, to being with a woman, to being with anybody. And I know that we come across as harsh and I feel as if at times I can come across as insensitive or super shitty. I'll admit it. Sometimes I will use shock value to get somebody's attention because sometimes <clears throat> y'all just don't listen. Mm -hmm. And I can say something as much as I want to and sugarcoat it and be nice and sweet and try not to hurt your feelings. But when you get your feelings hurt, you really go, oh, my God, what did she just say to me? And yeah. Then you're really going to think about it. The best is when it's the same situation that yeah. somebody else is in and they get to hear it while we're attacking the person who's in the situation or right. attacking the situation, I should say. We don't attack people, but because um, then they're like, this doesn't apply to me, but this really fucking applies to me. So I'm yeah. not going to get butt hurt. I'm just going to listen. Yeah. yeah. And I, I've been that woman in that relationship where I was just wishing for the bare minimum and the bare minimum doesn't exist because the bare minimum for everybody is just the
the basic standard of what they'll tolerate in a relationship. Yeah. I get pissed when my husband does dishes. And then there are women out there who are praying that their husband would do the dishes. Our bare minimum looks different. I want people to experience what I have with you. I am not on the fucking market. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. However, if you're a man and want something like this, coaching calls. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> really good plug because i'm also doing coaching call guys that's funny sky said stop i'm crying in the shower well that's the best place to cry because nobody can see your tears oh crying <coughs> in the shower is so cathartic for me yeah we're doing coaching calls guys i am doing coaching calls and if you want to seek guidance and how to find a man like the man I've landed and all of your other resources have failed you. I'm a new one to try. <laughs> I am a new resource to try. Where are we marketing that? Like where can people go to? Um, are they just it, emailing us? It, or? it will go, it will go live after the bath products are completely packaged and fucking out of the house, which is slowly happening this week. Um, I packaged 110 orders yesterday. Did you? I mean, over the last two days. Yeah. Then there's still probably about 90 left. So 70 to 90, somewhere in yeah. there. But I, I've been delivering them as you've been packaging them. So they, they've, we've had all of the small boxes have gone out. You've made, what, four trips to the post I office? I think so, yeah. So unless you've ordered anything bigger than a two-ounce oil and soap, most of that's been shipped. The four-ounce and the bigger bigger ounce things have not gone out yet. Um, but I want to get that done so that that's not a priority of our life, and then we'll get into the coaching thing. But I think what I'm going to do is create a coaching tab on the website. Okay. with a direct mm -hmm. questionnaire that has to be filled out so that we can read the questionnaire and then reach out if we can ha you know, if we're going to work with somebody because right. I'm not going to, I wouldn't work with that chick. The one that sent that email yeah. because of how crazy her life is. I'd be like, you need to get your life in order first, get a loan, like work this shit out with him. And then I will help you however you want to get help. But right now you're a doormat. And until yeah. you're willing to set your mm. boundaries and like, you're just too far. It's too much work. You're going to be with me for months. I, I, I would rather not charge you for that. I would rather you do the work. And then when you get to the point where you're ready yeah. to start really accepting the help. So that kind of scenario would, would be different. I I'm not saying I wouldn't work with people like that. Yeah. I take that back because I absolutely would. But I would be very forthcoming in that you're going to be spending a whole yeah. lot of fucking time with me over the next six or seven months. It's not going to be a quick one month thing for you. So, yeah, I, I plan on being straightforward like that, too. <laughs> I have a thing typed up on my phone. It's a whole introduction to the coaching with me. And in there, I write, I'm going to piss you off. Yeah. And you're going to take it out on me. And I'm going to smile at you and say, it's okay. I'll see you next week. And that's how it's going to be. Yeah. I'm going to push you in your boundaries. I'm going to push you in your comfort zones. I'm going to push you in your <laughs> self-worth. And if you become uncomfortable and mad, I'm not going to take it personally. Okay, um, we got early access from Melissa Cooper. Julie Rock says, to the tune of We Just Got a Letter, she ain't got no boundaries, she <laughs> oh ain't got gosh. no boundaries, she ain't got no boundaries, and she doesn't listen to what I said. Oh my gosh, that was fantastic. Just wanted to tell Pete she looks so elegant today. My husband and I both uh, love you and are so grateful for the work you do. Uh, Jam G84 said, what are your opinions on Adderall use and the negative side effects? My husband takes it daily and our fights seem to always happen when he's coming down from it. Um, it sounds to me like he's abusing a medication that's not for him. That, I mean, that's really my opinion. It sounds like he's taking something that's not for him because I know people who, who need Adderall that, that, that doesn't have those kind of effect, um, you know, issues. I don't know about enough about Adderall to have an opinion on that. Yeah. Luna Rose part two said, we've been here since three months into the podcast and you've been, um, as excuse me, excuse me, astronomically improved our marriage and family. We've become better. Thanks to to be better <clears throat> Then the $50 super chat from Kyle, which we read Alexa was for $5 said, do you have a video on interacting with your partner playfully? My husband said he understands better watching how Chris interacts with peaches. Can you repeat that? How about I just move it? Okay. This one. Do you have a video on interacting with your partner playfully? My husband said he understands better watching how Chris interacts with peaches. My husband said he understands better watching how Chris interacts with peaches. 
I, I honestly don't know what they're asking. Uh, we 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 have like we talk we kind of talk shit to each other sometimes. Like yeah. we have playful banter, but it's not. I, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't think I've ever once thought about how we are playful. No, that's never once been a thing. This is just who we are together. So it's not like, oh, I'm I'm hyper aware of it. Are you? Yeah. Why? Because when you're going through it, it changes. Huh. So remember the other day when you're like, when you're going through it, it's really hard for me to not think that I'm the problem. Right. That's one of those things where when you're going through it, I ha- I'm, I become hyper aware that everything changes. I mean, like I, I recognize when you still go out of your way to be like lovey dovey and touch me, but. I would say it decreases by like 60%. Hmm. And I have to remind myself that you don't hate me. You're not removing your love from me. You're just, you're having a hard time. Okay, so then how would you answer their question? And I'm sorry that that happens, but Uh, it's, it's just how I process shit. No, you don't have to apologize for that. I mean, I chose to be with you. Well, I don't think we have videos on interacting with your partner play- playfully. I don't think that's ever been a discussion on the podcast. We can create skits. <clears throat> I touch your butt a lot. I do. You know, little perfect apple dumplings. Ashley said, these fingers are not spirit fingers. These are spirit fingers. <laughs> I like the aggression. Katie Reed said, I wish you would have been in town when I came to get my tattoo. My husband and I wanted to meet you. Love your content, guys. Yeah, we were not here when you came down. And, and if you if we were, we would have had made it a point to go into the shop. I, I've been in the shop maybe four times since January 1st. Yeah. Bethany Baker said, wait, this guy said he didn't want more kids and they didn't take measures to not have kids. Talk about trapping. Ooh, that's a good point. Ooh, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Uh, all right, going to the chat now that I can see the super chat. Stacy Fortney for fifty dollars. Thank you for the super chat. Said seeing the way you two love each other and how patient and gracious you are with of each other while still holding each other accountable is amazing. Seeing Peaches thank Chris for their life together has made me follow suit with my man, changing lives. I'm curious how that's changed your life because having somebody who is appreciative and grateful and aware of the work that we are doing makes men work harder. This really does come down to us peacocking. Mm-hmm. Oh, you like that? Watch this. We are, we are giant 12-year-olds. Every man on the planet is a fucking 12-year-old in his heart. Like, watch what I can do. Do you still feel like you want a peacock for me? I do. But it's it's evolved. What my, my, how do I word this? It, it's not... Yes, it, it's still there. I'm not saying that it's not, but it, it's changed in how I peacock. Because now it's not... I don't know how to word this. Now it, it's not so much about, look what I can do to you. Mm-hmm. It's more about, look what I got. Like, like, like now, me? now yeah. Meaning me? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, now I'm the, the kid that carries his favorite blanket around with him everywhere he goes. Like, yeah. look at my blanket, bitches. You don't have one of these. Like, it's a different flex. <laughs> but yes, the peacocking yeah. is still there. <clears throat> Thank you for elaborating on that. that I do still, I still do those things. Yeah. I still do the, the the basic things: sending flowers, edible arrangements, smacking your ass when you walk by. Like I still tell you, you're beautiful. I like the way you look. I said it today when you came in. Like you look great today, or you I, you look nice. I think yeah, I said. You said you look good today. Good. Okay. So I still I still pay compliments, and I'm mm-hmm. still still in that that that'll never go away from me. I want you to know that I appreciate everything about you and us. But the the peacocking, I think, I think at this point you kind of know the limits of my ability. And if I try to peacock (laughs) now, I'm going to hurt myself. So, um, I think, okay, no, I, I'm going to say this. (laughs) So I know that it's a real genuine concern that you're going to end up in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to be sexy as shit in a wheelchair. (laughs) Blow my, blowing a tube to move around. Why would it be a two? Because it depends on where my paralysis starts. If it's in my lower back, it'll just be my legs. If it's in my neck, which is also a possibility, it'll be from the shoulders down. Yeah. And I'm going to blow my tube into a swimming pool or the beach. Hopefully the chair doesn't short out and I actually make it where I need to go because I don't want to live like that. I don't at all. I would give you a merciless ending if you wanted to. Yeah. I mean, a merciful, a merciful ending. Yeah. That's the word. <laughs> Cacti chick 
499 said, I really need some advice. Boyfriend's baby mama ran off with their baby to the other side of the country. No custody agreement yet. Well, depending on what state you're in, that's illegal. And um, you can't do that. Yeah, I'm going to be calling kidnapping. Yeah, in the state of Florida, if you move more than 50 miles, you can you can have your... your kidnapping charges. Yes, yeah, kidnapping charges. Yeah. So you need to look at the laws in your state. That's my advice. Mm-hmm. And get a lawyer. Uh, Brittany Long for $10. I am really trying to get my email sent, especially because you repeatedly say that you want the point of view of women changing into a traditional relationship and I'm struggling to put it into words. Actually, we got about 600 emails like that. Um, so we don't need those anymore, but they're still cool to have and come through and read. But we we got a lot of those, which kind of overwhelming when you really think about it because there's a lot of people who are changing. I, I believe there's a shift in the dating pool coming. And I think that this is the beginning stages of it. Yeah. Julie Baker, love you guys. I'll be sending a thank you email. That's a name I recognize. Um... That is one I recognize too. Jennifer Austin. Hi guys. Watch since the beginning on TikTok, but have never said hi. Hello. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you for being on our live stream. Hello, Jennifer. If you guys love what we do and want to support us, the best thing that you can do is share the content. It doesn't cost you anything to tell people about the podcast and share it. Holly Beatty, 499. My boyfriend and I are 23 and live together. Right now he isn't talking to me because I expect, expressed my issue on feeling brushed off. Thoughts on boundaries. Um, him not talking to you because you're feeling brushed off. That's not a boundary. That's a, an emotional immaturity and a lack of accountability on his part. And you two failing to communicate what the actual problem is. Yeah. You guys need to sit down and do the check-ins on a weekly basis until you learn to tech, like to actually talk to yourself, to uh, talk to each other. Goodbye, Marcella. All right. We're caught up on supers. Okay. Uh, well, what's everybody up to? It's noon. It's 12.15. go for like another 15 minutes and then we're going to wrap it up. I have another email pulled up if you want to do that. You want to do that? We can do that. All right. This email is titled Cheating, Processing, and Moving Forward. Okay. This is from a gentleman. Uh Uh-oh. We don't get those often. No, we don't. Recently, I have discovered your podcast, and I wish I did six months ago. I think it could have saved our relationship before it got to the point where we were struggling to fix it. Me and my girlfriend of nine years fell into a slump over the past two years, and unfortunately, both of us didn't take enough steps to address it. I love the accountability, Mm -hmm. and I love that you're not blaming her. I work in law enforcement, and my girlfriend works in nursing and fire volunteer. Hold on. Here's a great time for you to plug your cooking thing. Bye, Felicia said. Any more cooking videos coming? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Guys, I have a whole kitchen set up. I have an island. I have pots and pans. Are you still live on TikTok? I am. Okay. What we'll do is we'll finish the podcast after this email, and then we'll tell everybody to go to TikTok, and we'll take your phone off, and you you can show the kitchen off. Okay. All right, so I'll be showing where I'm going to be doing cooking videos, guys, after this is done. So if you want to see that, go check out my TikTok, To Be Better Peach, the number two, Be Better Peach. You changed it from peaches? I did. Okay. I'm making the the evolution happen, yes. I've also been referring to myself as Peach. Yeah. I'm doing the thing. I don't think I'm going to be able to call you Peach. That's okay. I'll still call you mine, though. Mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm just, I'm going down the Rolodex <laughs> of all the things that I love that you call me. That's funny. I can't move. <laughs> well, while you're trying to fix your brain over there, I'm going to read some super chats. I feel like a stunned goat. <laughs> Uh, Alexa said, not sexual, but sensual interaction, smacking your butt, calling her a hottie, things like that. I don't know what that was too. I must've missed something. Uh, probably in response to being playful. Mm. Varnella, 828, sent a $2 super chat. Taylor Frame for five bucks. You two have helped me so much in my life. I could never repay. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. You can repay us by sharing the content. Share it all the time. Ashley for five bucks said, thank you, Chris, for your comment about men peacocking. I can't wait to spread that nugget of wisdom. We do that. And when you, when you hype us up, it makes us want to do more. Alex, 
Your podcast brought my friend's marriage back from the, the edge of divorce. Thanks for leaving the porch light on and leading the way for better things. We, um, we're doing our, our monthly, uh, our quarterly t-shirt for Patreon. I actually just put the order in for the actual physical t-shirts yesterday night. So that's done last night. Um, and I was trying to figure out what I want to put on them cause I don't know yet. And we were brainstorming. How about we do voice of the broken to be better podcast? I like that. I do too. That's good I do too. That's for the $30 tier. Mm -hmm. I like that. The I had to add day. two shirts because I didn't put them on for us. <laughs> Texted Jordan at like 930 this morning. I was like, bro, I need another small and an XLT. All right, let's get back to the email. Okay. Our schedules commonly don't line up and her dedication to helping people has left her completely burnt out physically, mentally, and emotionally. Over the past two years, our passion and communication slowly disintegrated and we found ourselves in the roommate stage. Intimacy was very limited and she was not engaged. Intimacy was very limited and she was not. Oh, engaged, you mean present. Okay. Over the past nine years, I have taken on the majority of the responsibilities of our house and our relationship. And she continuously becomes less and less appreciative and evolve. Involved. I tried talking to her multiple times over the past year about our issues and her commitment to her careers, which was always met with negative comments and immediately had the conversation shut down or dismissed. I wonder if that's because she felt like maybe she has something to prove. Like, why would that, why would that feel like an attack? Uh, she said, they said careers. So she is a nurse and then she's also a volunteer firefighter. Okay. That's a lot. Those are two really fucking demanding jobs. Very mentally taxing jobs. Time consuming. I'm good. That's people who are first responders and work as medics and doctors and y'all are a stronger type of human being than I am. I could not. Because of this, we couldn't openly talk about what was going on. I commonly felt if I brought up our issues, she was going to leave me. That's a problem. Yeah, this is a lot. That that says okay, so this is this is proof that men also go through that. Mm -hmm. And he is a he doesn't feel safe in his relationship to have a fucking conversation. Yeah. Would we ever do live calls? We are actually getting ready to start doing coaching, guys. We do live calls for Patreon. We do do live calls for Patreon. We do that now. We actually do those Sunday nights after our live streams on YouTube. If that's something you're interested in, definitely check out the Patreon. Um, but we will also be doing live calls. To be decided on the date, but we'll be coming. Oh, I read the next sentence. I'm sorry. Go ahead. As our communication became more and more limited, she began seeking attention from other people. Okay, so this just triggered a thought in me. I'm going to go on this tangent real quick. Have you seen the ads on TikTok for AI girlfriends? No. You know, what I see on TikTok is Blue Chew and Alpha Brain. Every two videos. Yeah. Yeah. So much so that I've, I'm not interested. Mm-hmm. Like, stop. I don't right. fucking care. And they're like, why? And I'm like, because I see this constantly. Mm -hmm. I also don't scroll TikTok. Like, I very rarely will I sit down and actually mindlessly scroll maybe once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing yeah. over and over and over again. And I'm getting hat ads. Hat ads. Which is really fucking weird because I own like maybe four hats and yeah. I only wear one of them. Right. And it, it's the cock hat that I have. And I, I've bought that hat three times and that's not something that sells on TikTok shop. So like, why am I seeing hat ads? They're like, hey, you bald cracker, cover up your fucking, you're losing your hair, bitch. It didn't like you and it left. Oh my goodness. So just go ahead and cover it up with a hat. That's how I feel when I see the hat. Is that, what you, is that to, how you to talk tell to me yourself? Something sometimes. Oh my gosh, babe. You know that that's, um, dude, the fucking book that I'm reading right now well, I'm your has, has fucked me up and I feel challenged and insulted. I'm not your dude. You are right now. Because I'm trying to be vulnerable. <laughs> you hit me with, I'm not your dude. I'm not they, your bro. That book said that people who do not love themselves and constantly talk down about themselves do so from a place of 
If I make this known that it's an imperfection and I'm acutely aware of it, people cannot weaponize it and use it against me. I'm like, excuse me? The fuck did you just say to me? Yeah. I'd be, my, my knee jerk reaction would be a throat punch. I paused. I've been like. And then I backed it up like four minutes. Yeah. Just in case I was missing context. <laughs> and I wasn't. Oh my gosh. You felt how people feel watching us. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Email. Let's get back in the email, please. Oh, well, no, I, I had a point. Oh. It was the AI girlfriend thing. Um, the ad was a dude talking to an AI girlfriend and his actual real life girlfriend walks into the room and goes, you're cheating on me. And he goes, no, it's just AI. And then the girlfriend goes on this whole tangent about, oh, yeah, I'm cool with my boyfriend having this. Imagine having super deep, in-depth conversations connecting you to somebody else. But it's all virtual. I'm like. So you're just making it easier for people to cheat. Like, why would you not have those super deep, in-depth, vulnerable conversations with your actual real-life loving person? You know, this is already becoming a thing. That scenario that you just laid out is actually becoming a I thing. Know. There are people who are trying to fabricate robots to it, be able to put AI into it. It's right. That's actually getting, that's a huge market. Yeah. Yeah. I brought up my thoughts and views about the individual and what I saw his intentions were. Oh, I just skipped a part. So she began seeking attention from other people. Over the past six months, I saw another man that she believed was only a friend become more and more interested in her. I brought up my thoughts and views about the individual and what I saw his intentions were, which she dismissed on multiple occasions. Shame on her. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think that people do that because they don't want to lose what they're getting out of it. Yeah, they don't want to lose the attention. Shame on her for that. I think it could be more than attention. What do you think it could be? I, I think that on a base level, attention is, is probably the right word. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Emotional needs, maybe. I think it could be deeper than that. I, I think I think that when they're, they're nine years in, he hit the seven-year itch, and for the last two years, their relationship has been shit. Okay. She obviously feels the same way, and people are being inappropriate with her, and she's allowing it to happen because there's a need being filled there. She feels probably a beautiful woman. Like, she probably feels beautiful. She probably feels good, wanted, fawned over, desired, things that he's not making her feel mm -hmm. because they're both in that rut. And just as I can say that he's not doing that, she's obviously not doing the same thing for him. Mm -hmm. So they're both at fault. Yeah. But she is shopping at the wrong grocery store. Bitch, we eat Publix in this house. Right. Why are you, why are you owning Dixie right now? Mm -hmm. Come back to Publix. Like, I'll give you the pub sub. Let's go. Oh, my God. <laughs> that, I, I think that that's the deeper end, end of it because it's not just attention. Right. Attention is, is the, the layer, I think. But as you break that down there, there are emotional needs that are not being met mm -hmm. that she's allowing other people to, to feed. Right. Allowing them to water. Yeah. Oh, hello, Danish. I'm buying the voice of the broken.com voice of the broken.com is taken and parked and I'm not going to pay what people are trying to sell it for. So I'm buying the voice of the broken.com. Okay. Back to the email. Yep. Eventually at a community event and small party shortly after I saw the way him and her were communicating with each other. And it started becoming more obvious to me that she was starting to be receptive of his intentions. Yep. So I was right. And it starts with that window shopping. All of this started with window shopping. Lust in the heart's cheating, in my opinion. The following day, I addressed it again with her and asked her to cut him out because I do not believe he is trying to be just a friend but wanted more with her. And you know what? For all of the ladies out there who think that men are not okay with being a side piece, in my previous marriage, I actually had a male boss of mine come forward like, and tell me 
this is gonna this is gonna be the best you ever get it. I'm willing to be here and be your man while you're married and give you money and funds and all these other kinds of things. I know a lot of men who are okay with being a side piece. That's, There's no commitment there. I, I personally know a lot of men yeah. who go after women who are simply married because there's no no possible future. None. They can they get the the attention, the intimacy yeah. meter filled, they get to lay the dick down. And if they're in a sexless marriage, it's even better for for the guy that I know that does this shit because they become obsessed with getting laid and they they feel good about themselves and he's the one that gets this is solely a, a, like a um, internal gratification thing for him and I truly believe that yeah but it also allows him to go from woman to woman to woman because these women are married he doesn't have to worry about any type of real connection there he doesn't have to worry about them texting him at 11 talking about where are you at because they're in bed with their husband he gets to go do whatever the fuck he wants to do that's a very real thing wow yep we we've, we've actually talked about this person you know who it is Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I know who you're talking about. I just, it, it, is that an ego thing too? I do believe it is. Like, I do believe it is. I got myself a married woman. And I'm satisfying her more than her husband can. On a level. I believe yeah. that. Yeah. It, it, be, it would have to be because like that a marriage is supposed to be a sacred thing and right. they're stepping out for me. Right. Well, I mean, at that point you, you also got to factor in the amount of people who are in marriages who tell people okay. they're in an open relationship that are not in an open relationship. Mm hmm. So you said your phone died? Yeah, I forgot to bring the cable. I will, I'll grab that real quick because are you going to go live again after? And I can do it for my actual phone. Okay. I can do that. Okay. They'll go to YouTube if they want to continue watching. Okay. Um, she did not agree with my opinion, but did agree to cut him off. You have to come to me once. Ho hold on. Okay, Ho hold on. on. Rosie Cruz said every single man crossed the boundary some more than once, even after being told just friends. Every man? Really? Every man. Or just every man you've experienced. Eventually, you guys will learn to stop speaking in definite. Right. Because not everyone on the planet is the same as everyone else. I hear that and it instantly makes me look down on people. Yeah. If you speak on definites, and this is just the way it is for everyone across the world, mm -hmm. I can't have a serious conversation with you. Yeah. I agree with that. I would end the conversation there. I would. Um, EFA agent 47 on Twitch said, what do you guys feel from a man's perspective? Seeing your fiance say, I love you, honey. I miss you. Sending hugs, text messages to her boss. Where is this? What? It, on Twitch. Oh, it's on the Twitch. one that's got the purple background. What do you guys feel from a man's perspective? Seeing your fiance say, I love you, honey. I miss you. She's cheating on you with her boss. Yeah. It's, that's not your woman, bro. That's that, not your woman. No. Nope, that's a placeholder. You're a placeholder for that woman. Holy shit. Yep. Okay, back into this. Uh, not back into this. If you, you have to come to me once and say, I know this person is a friend to you. I saw X, Y, and Z happen, and I am not comfortable with it. Done. My husband comes above all else in my life. I don't care if I've known you since high school, middle school, we were childhood best friends. If you step out of line and I don't recognize it, but my husband does, my husband ain't never lied to me about anything before. You don't think that makes me controlling? No, because I would expect the same thing if I came to you and said, she's making me uncomfortable. I don't want you talking to her anymore. I would expect you to stop speaking to that woman. Do you, um, do you remember the other night when we were watching Napoleon and Josephine let that, she reached over and touched that dude's hand at their dinner table yeah. and he looked down and saw it and you could tell he was getting mad. Mm -hmm. I would have walked over there and pulled that dude out of his chair. And I don't mean like grabbing him and pulling him out of the chair. I would have flipped his chair backwards so that he had the chance to stand up and he was already on the ground. I'd have fucking ended that dude, especially yeah. for doing that in front of me. There wouldn't be, there wouldn't be conversation between There's you no and I chill beforehand. About that. Right. Yeah. There would be pure violence and I would deal with the consequences afterwards. Because there's an ultimate level of disrespect there. Mm -hmm. And that ties into the same same email or text message or uh, the text message situation here in the chat is yeah. what we're reading in the email. So it's relevant to both. Yeah. We have 650 people watching us right now on YouTube. Holy shit. It jumped 100 since my TikTok died. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Get cozy. Hit the subscription bell. Maybe that little ring notification bell. This is where we go live if you want to see the both of us. And it's better quality, in my opinion. Okay. I appreciate that you make me a priority in your life, babe. 
course I do. This is, this is the whole fucking point of being married. I know. I just want you to know it means a lot to me. I um, I'm sorry that you have had relationships where that's not the case. I, I have had relationships where that's not the case. I have been the person in the relationship where I've made that not the case for other people. Yeah. But those are the learning lessons that we have to have to get to where we are. And that's why we have the relationship that we have because it's not about me and it's not about you. It's about the relationship. Right. So. I feel so lucky to have you. Why? Because you're what I prayed for. This is what I've always wanted in a relationship. This is how I've always wanted to be loved. And I still have days where I wake up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to wake up and he's not going to be here. Like it was all just a fucking dream. That'd be a long ass dream. Yeah, it would be. I'm sorry I cry so much. I fucking hate it. I don't mind it. I would rather you cry than get angry. <laughs> yeah. You being an emotional crier when you feel something is a-okay by me. Well, it wasn't always this way. Right. Well, you're not throwing plates at my head. Yeah. Or toasters, so that's, right. that's a good thing. Could always be worse. No, I was, a, I was a yeller, a screamer. Okay, back into the email. I'm going to put this down so I can actually see the chat. Two months later, I came home early from work. She was in between night shifts, so I figured when I got home, she would be sleeping. But she wasn't there. Her family lives a short distance away, and I figured that she just went there, so I continued to drive. She wasn't there, and once she wouldn't answer her phone, I became worried. Oh, man. I had a gut feeling to go to this guy's house, and that's where I found her car. Let's, let's address the worried statement because in a healthy relationship, that worried fear would have been, I'm calling the hospitals. Yeah. Maybe she didn't make it home from work. I'm calling her family. Hey, have you seen whoever? Mm -hmm. Not, I'm going to drive by this dude's house. This is no different than when you lose the trust and feel the need to search through the phone to just end the relationship because it's not fucking right. Mm -hmm. You know, you fucking know already. What do you, what do you need proof for? If your gut is saying this isn't right, you listen to your fucking gut. I, I don't understand why this is still a thing for people. Our, our gut instinct has kept us alive for a hundred thousand years as prey. Yep. We didn't become predators until we had tools and we're able to hunt in packs. Right. We don't have canines. We don't have claws. We don't have a hard exoskeleton. No, we are squishy fucking meat. meat. Bags. That's it. <laughs> Follow your instincts, guys. Yeah. I have been that person who was in a relationship that when I became worried, it was worried because I, they were cheating on me. With you, if I don't hear, from back, hear back from you in two hours or you don't answer my phone call, my mind immediately goes to you were in a car accident. How often do you check the, um, the phone thing? When I know you're riding your motorcycle. I... I completely forgot that that was even a thing yeah. until just now when you're like, cause two hours, Yeah. even when I ride my motorcycle, it's only 45 minutes at a time. My ass hurts. I got to get up and fucking move around. I know. I just, <laughs> I, when you're on your motorcycle is when I'm most anxious about you being on the road. Yeah. So I'll check just to make sure you got to where you needed to go and not stuck in the middle of 41. Oh, I've I fucking panic. Never once checked that location thing. No, I just call. And if you don't answer, I call back. And if you don't answer, I call back. And then I leave yeah. a message. I'm fucking worried. Call yeah. me back. And then I hear from you. And normally it's like five minutes, but how dare you not answer the phone when I call? <laughs> I, feel I can so have bad. to describe my poop in length and I need fucking, I need someone to talk to you and you're my friend to answer the phone. <laughs> I need a hype man. Yeah. You're the only person who's going to appreciate this, you know? And I do. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Hearing that you have regular bowel moments puts me at peace. We're so fucking stupid. <laughs> And I need to know that it's healthy. If it's black as coal, I'm taking you to the hospital. We are so dumb. We are oh, so, so dumb. We are. I lied. I also checked. I called your phone twice and you didn't answer. And then I checked the location because I also thought you got into a car accident. When was that? 
Um, I can't remember what, I think you might've been talking to Jordan. Oh, okay. That makes or sense. Or like you stayed too long at the office and I thought you were somewhere else. Yeah, that makes sense. I used to be that, holy shit. You want to read that one? We got a hundred dollar super chat from Holly. I've never, I, it's been a very long time since I've seen the red and that just caught me off guard. Well, no, we get, the red is 50 or above. Is it? We had a red one earlier, okay. but it's the That's first time is. I've seen a hundred dollar super chat in a hot minute. Okay. Holly, I said yes last night to the man I prayed for. Oh, we have implemented things discussed in your conversations. Thank you for allowing me to realize my toxic traits, to work on them, and for helping me realize traditional marriage is okay. Wedding invite coming to you 2025. I love that for you. We almost crashed a wedding in Winter Haven. We almost did, yeah. Something came up and it made it not possible, yep. but one of these days we'll be somewhere where somebody's having a wedding and we're just going to roll through. Yeah. Congrats. That's fucking gangster. That's amazing. All right. Let's get back to the email, please. Okay. I had a gut feeling to go to this guy's house and that's where I found her car. She continued to not answer her phone. And after 15 minutes, he came out of his house and she called me. Jenny corrected me. 50 is pink. 100 is red. So you were right. I was wrong. Okay. So dude walked out of the house. She calls because the dude walked out. She proceeded to lie about where she was and didn't see me sitting at the end of the driveway. I confronted her about why she was there. And she said that he had a Christmas gift for her and she went to pick it up and that they had kissed. I then confronted him. He eventually confirmed that they did sleep together. Why does that matter? Right. She's already doing... Let's let's just without the infidelity. Right. I see the car is is there. I'm at the end of the drive. Where are you at right now? I'm at the store. We're done. Right. At this point, anything that you say is not trustworthy. We're good. I know where you're at. I'm in the driveway. I can see the car. I'll be at the house in 15 minutes. You can come get your shit. Yeah. Where I'm gonna just go pack my things and leave because I gotta be honest. That's probably the way it would be if we got the house together. I would just take what I can take and go. Yeah. I've started over so many times in life. It doesn't fucking matter. I'm good with that. You can have everything. I don't fucking care. Like you, you, you've destroyed this at that point. I fuck that all of it. Why, why even try to get into the discussion with him about the shit? Does it really fucking matter? She lied to you, mm -hmm. which means everything else that's going to be said about this situation is a fucking lie. Yeah. We went back to our house and talked more. She admitted that she never cut him off because he was dealing with mental health issues and felt bad for him. Mm. She okay. didn't cut him off because that Christmas gift was his dick. Yeah, that was the Christmas gift. Also, what about the mental health issues your man has been having within your relationship that you've just been shutting down because you're getting defensive or you feel attacked? That's a big problem for me. So she didn't cut him off because of poor mental health issues and she felt bad for him. Although when I asked to see their conversations via text, she had already deleted them. She continued to explain that due to her burnout, she has become numb to everything and hasn't felt any sort of emotion for the past few months in all aspects of her life, including our relationship. I called that. So you can say it after you've already blown up your whole fucking right. relationship and it has devastated a man who has dedicated nine years of himself to you. Word. Super healthy way to handle that. Let's look at the real the real issue here also is that they've been two years like this. Has he, it been two years? For him, like this? it has been. For her, it's been the last six months. Well, she he said for the last oh well for, for the past year. Okay. He's tried to have conversations with her. I thought at the beginning he said that they've been together for nine years and for the last two years they've been having issues, but I, I might be might be remembering something else, which happens. Oh, they um, fell into a slump over the past two years. There you go. And the last year has been issues because she won't have conversations. Right. So for the last year, two years, whatever, they have allowed themselves to live like this, which sucks yep. because they would rather just exist than have the hard conversation to make changes that need to happen. I would rather have a one hour conversation or a 10 hour argument, like a legit, I would rather have a 10 hour fight. Like we're fucking going at it, yeah. screaming, yelling. You can even throw things. I don't give a fuck. 
than to have two years of an uncomfortable living situation because I'm too big of a coward to have a conversation. And that's what this is on both of their parts. Mm -hmm. She opted not have the discussion because she didn't want to hurt him. And he didn't want to have the discussion because she couldn't handle it. And he didn't want to press. Both of that is cowardly behavior, in my opinion. This is a fucking problem. It is. We want to reserve the, uh, resolve this problem, and I'm not going to wait two years for it to happen, so let's have this out. If you've got to scream and yell and get angry, then you do that. Mm -hmm. But this needs to stop, and we need to come to resolution and get past the, the gridlock or the impasse of all of this and fucking fix the relationship. I won't live like that. Me either. If you are living like that, if this is your fault. Because you're making a choice to live that way. Whether you choose to have the hard conversation, choose to have a major fight, or choose to fucking leave, you are making a choice to live in an uncomfortable situation. Mm -hmm. So if any of you are listening to this and this is where you are, this is your fault. Because you're not doing anything to change it. Back to the email. I am so fucking annoyed now. Yes, back into the email. Okay. I'm going to woosaw for a minute. Okay. I made the decisions the first night to leave because I knew my anger emotions were not in control and having further discussions at the time would be pointless. The following day I returned and we talked more about what happened. She continued to be adamant that this was the only time this had happened and bullshit. that she did not have any intentions of doing this with him. I call bullshit. I also call bullshit on that. This is the first time she got caught. Yeah. And, and it may not be a physical thing. Right. It could be the first time she fucked somebody else, but that emotional validation and trying to fill the needs that's happened over the last two years yeah. has happened with multiple people. And it could be innocent flirting. It could just be, you know, text messages that he doesn't know about. Mm -hmm. Something has gotten to this point. You don't just go to that extreme. Right. <clears throat> <laughs> Jenna said, I swear I cry more than peaches during your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I struggle with this because I saw the way they interacted with each other months before and that she got rid of their communications. Yeah. I have spoken to him again and he has the exact same story as her <laughs> and admits that he had been pursuing her for the last few months. So I feel she is not honest with me on what was actually happening or she is unable to see his intentions or a mixture of both. Eventually, she explained to me that I was no longer pursuing her the way she wanted, but never expressed this to me. And that she was not receiving the attention she needed because, and became attracted to someone else because she felt that from them. She never communicated this to me before this happened and left me in a place where I feel so unappreciated, emasculated, and stripped of everything I thought we had. And you did nothing about it? Nope. I got frustrated. and You see the emoji that Lorna posted and then micro explosion posted? Oh yeah, look at that. It's me with fiery hair. That's funny. I love that. I, I don't know. It, it, does that, does it, is that them telling me that like, this is such a common thing that I have to have a fiery head emoji. Do I need to, to dial it back? I, I mean, apparently <laughs> I have one of me crying. So <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Shit. We're emojis, babe. Yeah. <sighs> now, trying to even talk to her about how I'm feeling is met with, you just need to accept what happened and get over it statements over and over again she continues to repeatedly state that she is sorry and how much she loves me and needs me but it never gets to a point of a meaningful discussion i'd leave Fuck she's, this. she's not remorseful yeah it she, happened get over it that that really is gonna do it that's exactly how you should talk to people when they're hurting i'm good on that yeah next if i was a man this woman is not good enough for me uh day vera said um it's, is your fault I cheated, question mark? Yes. I actually believe that. It's your fault I cheated? If that was the case, if I was in this situation, I would view that as a me problem. Am yeah. I responsible for her actions? Absolutely fucking not. Did she make a decision to do that? Yes. Am I to blame? No. It is my fault because I could have had conversations when I realized the intimacy was fading. Yeah. There are things that I could have done to have stopped this from getting there. 
There's a difference between accepting the accountability and responsibility for your inept decisions or your fail to act or your actions versus taking the blame for some actions that someone else did. Mm -hmm. And that's the discussion that needs to be had when we talk about this. But when it comes to this, yeah, yeah, bro, that's your fault. When you realize things weren't right, you should have had a conversation about it. Instead of just letting it go. And then, right, and you let it go too far and then it would have had to become a conflict or an argument that you weren't willing to have because arguments are a lot fucking harder because you don't want to see your person hurting when they're already not okay. Right. You don't want to feel like shit when you're not already okay. But the longer you let that go on, the worse you're going to fucking be and the harder that conversation is going to get until you no longer care. Then what? You suffered for a year or two for no fucking reason, and you now you're just you know um, desensitized to the whole situation and don't oop, don't give a fuck about any of that. Like, no, I don't know. I don't know. Someone asked where our emojis are. They're on Twitch. The emojis are a Twitch thing. I can't put them on YouTube. I mean, I probably could. Maybe. I, I think I could. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, back to the email. She has taken some steps to start rebuilding trust, but after two weeks thinks that that is enough effort and I need to get past it. No, homie, you betrayed the rest of our life together. Mm -hmm. You're going to climb the infinity steps with me and we're going to stumble and we're going to fall back a few and we're going to get up and we're going to climb and then some days we might feel good and skip a few. But this will be a nonstop battle that you and I are going to have to face because we both made fucked up decisions. Yeah. Every I, day is a choice to be with somebody. I need action, not words. We need, we need time to heal this and work through it. And therapy might need to be a thing, but like you not showing remorse or even going eventually go, just being like that, like that's, that doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. I understand the frustration on her part if she actually is remorseful and like this is constantly being thrown in her face. Yeah. But at some point you have to realize that you did this to yourself. This is a you problem. Mm -hmm. She is starting to speak to a therapist to deal with her burnout and some un unaddressed issues that she has dealt with for a number of years. I do not want to give up because I truly love her with everything I have and struggle to see a life without her. How can I try to get her to change in these difficult conversations? How can I try to get her to engage in these difficult conversations and try to work past this? The check-ins. Go to therapy with her. Or am I fighting for a relationship that's already over? I don't... I, I think that it, this is a, a too little, too late situation. Yeah. I, obviously... If you thought everything was good and she cheated, that would be a different discussion. But knowing that this went on for a year or two and 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 now all of this is happening, it's too little too late. You mm -hmm. should have started doing things in the beginning. The best time to fix things was then. Yeah. Second best time is right fucking now. So you can have absolutely try to start repairing this if that's what you want to do, but it's going to take a lot of work and she needs to be remorseful. Mm -hmm. If she's not remorseful and she's truly not sorry about what she did and she did it for her and she's okay with that, she's going to do it again. I, I'm willing, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm willing to bet that this has been a thing for her the entire relationship, but I'm also not oblivious to the fact that I believe that it happened before this one time. I agree with that. Yeah. Somebody in the chat said, can we talk about that? They've been together for nine years and not married. Is that a thing? Did I miss that? No, somebody just said it in the chat and like, but now I'm thinking about that. Because as a woman and a vast majority of women I know, they're not cool with just dating for nine right. years. Right. I, I thought they were husband and wife. Um, While you look that up. My girlfriend of yep. nine years. Wow. Well, I mean, that's a problem too. That is a massive problem, yeah. Um, I'm not even going to try to say the name on Twitch, but the last name of it was Ashley. Hi guys, I've been following you guys for a little bit now, and though I am not in a traditional relationship because I'm a queer woman, uh, but I say that a lot of your advice has helped me not only navigate my relationship with my partner, but relationships overall. Thank you for all you do. In um, in in gay relationships, you see the masculine and feminine energies taking to an extreme most right. of the times. Yeah. So if that's the case, how can you? not apply traditional value situations to those relationships. 
And and I'm not I'm maybe not, they I'm, meant traditional is just man and woman because that's also part of the traditional view for some very religious people. Well, for religious people, yes, I, and I agree with that. Um, I see it as blue job, pink job, and leaning yeah. into your your masculine and your feminine, or whichever energy works best with your right. And that's not leading. me shitting on anyone. That that's a genuine question, and mm-hmm. I, I I try to ask that to anybody who mentions that they're in that community or that they're in a gay relationship, like. I don't give a fuck what your relationship is. If you're thriving, that's all that matters. Yeah. But I, I still, I guess it's just something I've always viewed as a very prevalent thing. And I would, I would assume because I think that's a prevalent thing that that would be a norm for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that with Ant, they have their roles and they, they very much leave, live that even though, you know, they're gay. Yeah. So I, I think the answer to this is this guy needs to go to therapy with this chick and they need to start implementing the check-ins outside of therapy. Mm-hmm. I also need to think I need you to like really assess whether or not you want to be with this woman because she's just your girlfriend. You guys have lived together. There's not like if there's not been talks of marriage in like forever with this, why have you wasted a decade of your fucking life with somebody? Yeah. Personally, marriage. I, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I was actually just responding to that. Uh, somebody said, personally, I don't believe marriage makes a relationship. I think it's just a piece of paper. Marriage is not a piece of paper. The piece of paper is given to you by the government so that they can tax you guys as a unit. It's more than that. Marriage is marriage. It's a commitment. It is a, you are my priority in life. And no matter what, we are going to fucking get through this and I'm not going to abandon you. Mm -hmm. It's also a covenant between you and your God. It is. Uh, that, 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 that mentality of it's just a piece of paper is why marriage doesn't have the weight that it had a hundred years ago. That's why it's disposable now. Yeah. I don't, um, I, I don't believe that to be the case. I think that that mentality is a problem, but mm-hmm. I, I think that when it comes down to it, um, the paper aspect of it allows the government to have more control over your life. Yeah. So is that the end of that email? Yeah, that was it. All right. There, I, I believe people who go into the woods and say vows to one another and dedicate their souls to one another before their God. That is a marriage. I I agree. And they do not have to go into the government and get married in a courthouse and sign their line on a dotted piece of paper. That is not a marriage to me. That's just a certificate from the government saying, all right, cool. We're going to treat you guys differently. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome us into your home motherfuckers because we're there now. Yeah. Um, Ashley Everett said, Oh, I think I read the peacock one. I'm gonna read it anyways. Thank you guys. Uh, Thank you, Chris, for your comment about men peacocking. I can't wait to spread that nugget of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we definitely read those. Uh, Stacy Fortney, it's changed my relationship because now I, uh, I now say all my gratitude to him out loud, even for the smallest things like Peaches do, does, and it's made a huge difference. Thank you both for what you do. Um, Stacy, when you have people in your life who say to you, why do you treat him like a child and give him gratitude and grace for everything he does when he should be doing that anyways? How does that make you feel? Because that is one of the biggest fucking gripes that I see on TikTok in the comment section is people saying, I shouldn't have to thank him for doing the basic or the bare minimum. I shouldn't have to thank him for doing the things that he has to do anyways. Mm -hmm. And I think that's bullshit. I think that you should absolutely show gratitude for the things that your person does because yes, they have to do it on their own, but they are doing it. And there are a whole lot of people out there who check the fuck out and don't. Um, Vernell said, been with my husband for 20 years and married 18 and it's been a roller coaster. How would I have a live session on with y'all? Uh, you'd have to be a member of our Patreon and you'd have to, to send in an email titled zoom call. The screeners would have to proof it and they would set it up and it would be read that way. Mm -hmm. Amanda said, excited for Thailand, trying to convince the husband for our anniversary would be amazing to hang out with you guys and gain more community. I would, we'd love to have you. Mm -hmm. Um, I would also like to point out that for those of you who want to do Thailand but are afraid that you can't afford it, there is a company called Affirm, A-F-F-I-R-M, Affirm. Um, If you go through the website that we use, you can sign up and they'll pay for your trip and you pay pay in payments like a credit card. But I believe that you can also get your flight, the price, and then put that through Affirm and that you can finance the entire trip. Yeah, I'm not sure on that, but somebody told me you could, so I'm passing that information along. Amanda Julian said, I just shared your content with my son and daughter-in-law because you helped me and my husband and we already had a great marriage. That's fucking awesome. That is awesome. 
Isabella Sturgis, that's the name I recognize, said, I love that you guys in your community always show me more ways to improve, getting my husband to do the work with me and understanding him more. That's gangster. Bama Boy 1109, my wife's mother keeps asking us for money, even though I'm on disability. How do I get her to stop? By starting to say no. Yeah, say no. A giver will can only give so much, and a taker will continue to take. So if she asks for money, you tell her no. Mm -hmm. You're an adult. I can't afford to take care of you and my family. I'm on disability. You are the extended family. You're not my priority. My wife and my kids are. Get fucked. If you have to go that far, you can add the last part, but you shouldn't have to get that that far. Uh, Ashley Cunningham became an early access member. Uh, Frankie for $10 said, thanks for everything you guys do and the perspectives you give. I found your podcast early last year after an extremely toxic three-year relationship and it has helped my current relationship so much. Uh, Allison Kane, Klain, $5. Sorry, I can't afford much. I get paid Friday. My partner may make fun of me for listening, but I love you guys. You are helping me be better. Why would your partner make fun of you for doing something that is improving your quality of life? Be a dick. I I don't understand that. To spread misery because some people can't stand somebody else enjoy something. Yeah. Especially if there's spite in a relationship. It just doesn't make sense to me. It'd be like somebody making fun of you for reading a book. Yeah. Oh, you read, you fucking nerd. You know what I mean? Like, oh, what, you're cool because you're fucking illiterate? Like... Eat a dick. Right. Um, Jeremiah Johnson, $5. Wife and I went through something similar to this, but the man was overseas and we came out of it stronger than ever. I fucking love that. Glad that you came out stronger than ever. Emma Carpenter, how do I talk to my boyfriend about maintenance of our home when I start nursing school? I work five days a week, eight to five, and have labs after work every day an extern for 12 hours on the weekend. You tell him that that's his fucking duties as a man to make sure that your house is taken care of. <clears throat> I, 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 I'm not of the, the mindset that you can't say that it's your responsibility to do something. I believe it's a man's responsibility to make sure that the house is maintained. If your fucking pipes burst and you have to replace shit, he either needs to call a plumber or he needs to start fucking working. Mm-hmm. Get, the, get the cabinets replaced. Like, get the counters replaced. That's, that's his fucking duty as a man. I believe that. Um... So you need to have a conversation like, look, you're the man of the house. I need you to be the man of the house. Do it from a, do it from a point of, Hey, when you're on a ladder, that's shit sexy as fuck. And right now there's a whole lot of shit that needs to be done. Go do the thing. Go, go stand on the ladder so I can stand down here and watch you. I don't know. Like, yeah. uh, Meg Schaefer became early access. Ethan ball became early access. And then Zach said, shout out to Jenny. What an absolutely phenomenal unit of a human being. Can we get some Jenny is the best in the chat. I love that. Um, I, I think it's, it would be, I would be remiss at this point to not mention the, the, the moderators and the people that we have that are running things behind the scenes. I know that Peaches and I are the face of the podcast, but this would not exist if it wasn't for Zach and Jenny and AJ. And, you know, Twitch would not exist if it wasn't for Lauren and Danish. They've done a whole lot of fucking work behind the scenes, making that all a thing, a thing. And then Discord itself would not run as effectively if it wasn't for the other mods who are in there. Jenna, um, you know, everybody that's just fucking in there every single day. Sabrina, you know, you guys are, are really hold it down. Heather, the word Smith, you guys are, are fucking killing it down yeah. there and you're making it so that we don't have to focus on that aspect of things, which allows us to continue to help grow the podcast. So our podcast would not have the growth it's had over the last year if it wasn't for everyone who's be- involved behind the scenes. Yeah. So. I think she may be talking about the day-to-day things, not necessarily actual maintenance stuff. I say that because she said how much time she is spending at work and school. You mean like doing household chores? Well, if she's not there and he's the only one that's there, he should be cleaning up and doing all that shit because he's the one making the fucking messes. Chaotic Thoughts. There's a name I also recognize. It's in the chat every day. Uh, just want to say love you both. Thank you for working so hard and all the sacrifices you guys make to give us content and help us be better. Thank you guys for continuing to support it. Sierra said, I keep reading Jen A in a Forrest Gump voice. That's because that's where that came from. Yeah. It was Jen and then the letter A. And I made a comment about how I can't not read that Jen A. Mm-hmm. And that's been an ongoing joke for a year now. Yeah. She just ran with it. 
He ran with it. You made an what eight minute compilation video of all of the Jedi's from the I, Forrest Gump movie. I, yeah, I found that. I didn't make it, but yeah, I found you that found and absolutely it. put it into a video. <laughs> It was it was like uh, 132 Jennies or something. Yeah. It was every Jenny in the movie and one Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. How many people do we have watching? Currently 625 on YouTube and Holy shit. Uh, 87 on Twitch. That's wild. Yeah. What do you want to do now? Um take another five minutes to read some some questions and then wrap it up okay thank you guys for so much you do you're an inspiration i watch that and it cracks me up regularly just finally became a member of youtube and patreon happy to be here dope thank you jasmine um daisy dazed daisy said just wanted to say hi i've been watching you guys for a while now on tiktok and youtube but yesterday i decided to start from the beginning i started at episode one the last story you guys talked about my inner child was hurt and healing all at once i bawled for over 30 minutes had my best friend sit down and watch that part she explained it better than i ever could and he held me he just held me it was an awesome experience thank you guys so much for what you do yep it's crazy to see the way that we are affecting we, change. Yeah. Discord is ready for zombies laughing my ass off. Well, I, I'm I'm ready to play zombies. That's what's going to happen when we're done. She's going to go pick the kids up and I'm going to game for a little bit. I'd love to hear more about your religious beliefs. I've been so curious about life lately and could uh and what could be, but also I'm pretty stubborn. We um I am almost positive that the video that I just dropped yesterday last night on uh, Patreon was a replay from a Vimeo video that we did in the beginning where we talked about faith. It was called like, this was a mess because we were both fucking crying. Yeah. Um, I'm almost positive. That's the video that I dropped yesterday. Somebody else can confirm. I think so because somebody commented and said that they really liked that video and things that I said in it. And I was like, are you talking about the garden segment of the mom? And they were like, no, the religious content. I was like, I have no idea what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. That was the first video where you had talked about your faith. Gotcha. Yeah. Mary said, found your podcast last year and absolutely love your content. It showed me so much about myself and thank you guys for everything you do. Zombie girl 2020 on Twitch said, do you have any advice for me? My daughter, bio dad came back into her life eight months ago after being out of her life for two years. He didn't want anything to do with her and only wanted to be in her life when she turns five. Any advice? Um, though that sucks. If he's there now and actively trying, why would you prevent that from being a thing? Because the only person that you're going to hurt is your daughter. Yep. When she's 20 years old, she's not going to remember him not being there from five years old to, you know, or zero to five, but she'll remember him not being there her entire fucking life. So if he has the ability to be there now and he's trying to like actively be there, you should let him be there. I agree with that. Uh, Taylor on YouTube said, I just showed my husband a live that was about the mom question I had. And my husband said, that's the best advice he's ever heard and was glad I could ask. And glad I could ask it. It helped. You're welcome. It was the video that we dropped on Patreon. Yep. I want to play Minecraft too. Oh my goodness. You know, they have the Minecraft server. I mean, you can play Minecraft while I play zombies. I know that, that you have not been enjoying zombies very much lately. It's because playing solo is different from playing in a team of three. Yeah. You were getting, All of the zombies are focused on me. Yeah. You were getting pretty frustrated the other night though when we were in the red zone because you kept going down. Yeah, because I was getting stuck in places. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know if it was because I was lagging or my controller wasn't connecting properly, but I would hit the jump button and then it would lag for three seconds. And in that three seconds, I'd die. Hmm. It's weird that that was happening here. I get stuck on things and surrounded by zombies and that's when I go down and that shit frustrates the fuck out of me. Yeah, But I mean, that's kind of realistic when you think about what a zombie horde would be like. You can't get through that if they're all squishing on you, you know, which is kind of fun when you really think about it. I don't get frustrated when I'm at fault. No, I do. Because I recognize that I'm the fucking problem. I do. When it comes to video <laughs> games, I fucking do. Because I suck at like, yeah. like PvP. So if we were to play Warzone, I'd be fucking pissed, dude. Yeah. I would be that that really overweight dude that nerd raged in that old Vine video. Do you remember that? When mm -hmm. he flipped the Magic the Gathering table? Yeah. Yeah, that would be me. That would be me. That was that dude's entire content for a while. <clears throat> um... 
Holly for 20 bucks said, did we go over imposter syndrome the other night or is there one already out? I can go back and watch. I put up a reminder chat, but we didn't discuss further doing it to the end of the live. Want to learn me something. Um, I actually don't think that we did get into that, um, but we can real quick and then we can wrap this up. I guess that could be the end of the, the, the episode. Imposter syndrome is, is um, something that has given us an excuse to not give something our full effort. You think our full elf effort, or is that something that we adapt in order to maintain the mindset that we aren't as good as the work that we put out? It's the same thing, I think. Yeah. But I, I think, yes, yes to both. If you have imposter syndrome, it's because you believe you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. And as long as you continue to tell yourself that you're not good enough and that you're not going to be able to do this and nobody's going to believe in you and, and all of these things, you can't be hurt when you fail because you're never going to give it everything that you've got because you don't really believe you belong there. Mm -hmm. I also believe that if you are getting paid to do something or you have a following or you are actively doing something, you're fucking doing it. It may not be done to the way that other people have done it before you, but you are doing it. You can be a really shitty painter and do 200 paintings in a year. You're a fucking painter. Mm -hmm. You may not be good at it, but you are. Now, if you're getting mad because nobody's buying your shitty paintings, that's a different discussion. If you want to be a photographer and you buy the camera gear and you spend tons of money and buy the best of everything and then never use your camera, you're not a photographer. You're a fucking collector. You bought a bunch of expensive electronics that's sitting on a shelf. But if you go out every single day and take pictures and you suck at first and you slowly learn the technical side and learn how to edit and you get fucking decent over the course of a year and you are creating art that you enjoy, even if you think it sucks and everyone else thinks it sucks, but you enjoy creating it, you're a photographer. Mm -hmm. You're not a professional photographer because nobody's paying you for that. The idea of a um, imposter syndrome is something that I dealt with a lot in the beginning of this podcast, because I don't see myself as a relationship coach. I see somebody in the mirror who's made a lot of fucking mistakes in life that is finally proud of the man I am. Not going to cry. Not going to fucking cry. Um, my mistakes and my hardships and the struggle that I have gone through and fucking cut them out of on top has given me the voice to speak to other people who are currently going through that shit. I was broken at one point. I'm not anymore. I'm fucking good now. And I'm going to be better. I'm not fucking there yet. This is not my final form, bitches. Like, where's my motherfucker? We're doing the thing. We, you need to... What do you we mean? We need we're... to do the thing. Like, we need to <laughs> power the fuck up. Like, we're not there yet. Okay. But I don't believe I'm imposter in anything. Like, the idea of that's not a thing for me anymore. I know my fucking place in this world is where I'm supposed to be. It's here. But I have that because... I don't know. I just, if this wasn't going to be a thing, it wouldn't be a thing. If right. I had a podcast and had no listeners, but we had 200 fucking episodes out, we are still podcasters. Mm -hmm. We may not be making money off of it and people may not want to listen to what we have to say, but we're still that because we are doing what other people are not. Right. So that's my thought on that. There was uh, two super chats, I think. Nope, just one. Um, for five bucks, where can I find your discord link? It's not in the tree. So guys, we don't post a discord. The discord is a private community and it keeps out a lot of the trolls. It keeps out a lot of the dumb shit. It makes the mods job a whole lot fucking easier because they don't have to worry about people spending money to come in and fucking sell their items or destroy the community that we've built. So if you want to get into the discord, it is in the $15 tier of Patreon and the higher tiers as well. And if you want to be a part of that community. Join the Patreon at the $15 tier. If you find value in what we do, that's two Starbucks drinks a year or a month, I mean. You can fucking afford to miss Starbucks twice in a month to be a part of our Discord community. The value is there is a whole much better for you than the fucking sugar that's in your drinks. So join our Patreon. How about that? Huh. You want to wrap it up? Yeah, I want to go get something to eat before I have to pick up the kids. Word. With that being said, guys, thank you for tuning in. We enjoyed this. We, we were over 600 the most, the most of the time. And um, we will see you guys on Saturday, the 13th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because that's when the Thailand trip will be live. If you guys want to do that and you want to sign up at the Early Bird Special, that is currently on our Patreon. The link is there for you to sign up ahead of time and it will save you money 
there's $200 in savings if you sign up before the, the release on the 13th. Uh, with that being said, we will see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys. Bloop.